the, the, the articles were written uh, last year and it talks about uh, criminal organizations in four countries. Brazil, Peru, uh, Bolivia and Paraguay. It's not exactly the, the countries of Mercosur. Uh, and the idea, it's not uh, to relate it uh, with, Mercosur, with Mercosur. I just took the name to, to give the idea that it's a block. It's a, a block of drugs, <clears throat> of drug trafficking. And uh, I, uh, in 2013, I had to send uh, an idea to Instituto Presa Sociedad, IPES, of a project uh, investigating uh, the, exactly the organized crime. And uh, I had the feeling, I, I was a reporter for, for Extra, for, it's, a, it's a, uh, a Brazilian newspaper, and I it could be, and cover everyday crimes. I, I, I that time I covered uh, basically uh, crimes. I have the the, the perception that uh, countries uh, had a better countries now. The criminal organizations had a better integration than uh, countries. And uh, in that year, I, I wrote the project and the sent to Ipis asking to uh, asking for support to travel to Bolivia, Paraguay, and Peru, and for some cities uh, in the the, the 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 border of Brazil with these countries to understand how uh, this cooperation, how this integration happens. And uh, from January of uh, January of 2014 until May, I traveled to 16 cities, and uh, uh, of, of course from the, the four countries, and I interviewed authorities, uh, drug dealers, and uh, different kind of people that cope with this problem every day to understand how uh, these criminal organizations uh, makes, make the, the integration better than the official one. And it's uh, incredible because uh, my, my previous th thesis was totally correct. They really have a better integration than the, the, the option from these countries. And did you work with other journalists? Did you have collaboration of colleagues from these countries? I had in the, in the first part of the job that was uh, uh, the start of the searching, of the search because I, I ha have never traveled to Paraguay or Peru or Bolivia, so I didn't have sources in these countries. I didn't know which places I could go and which places I couldn't go because of safety. I didn't know in the cities of the border that it, I, 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 I needed to, to travel. I didn't know where I could go uh, safely and where I couldn't go. So in this part, in this uh, beginning, uh, other journalists, other reporters were crucial because I, they, they could map it for me. And they could say, uh, in, for, exa for example, here in Peru, in Lima, you can talk with Sonia Medina, that is uh, a prosecutor, a serious prosecutor that really fight against drug trafficking and she's a serious woman, so you can trust her. Uh, other colleagues put me in contact with uh, secret agents from uh, uh, DIA, from United States, Drug Enforcement Agency, and uh, they really gave me their sources. That's something that journalists don't use it to do. Don't use to do. So it's, it was fundamental to, to my to my job all the time. Uh, then after uh, gaining the the confidence of these people, I could uh, go by myself without without help. But in the beginning, this help was crucial. Criminal activities of individuals or states or corporations are increasingly 
transnational. So the, the response yes. of journalism should be transnational as well. Yes, I think I think that we have two two perspectives that uh, are important, and uh, they 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 don't exclude themselves. We have a local perspective that is the the, the local crime and the impact of the transnational crime in as a, in the routine of a city or of a country. And we have another pers perspective that is the transnational crime and how it happens. And I think that in this second perspective, journalism uh, is losing the battle. We, we don't have, uh, as we should do, we should have uh, this, this second perspective. For example, uh, when I started reporting for, for these articles, uh, I, I said to my, to my sources, to people that I, I, I talked with, I have a thesis. This is a thesis. It can be uh, uh, the reality or not. Uh, and for some people, in the beginning, when I said uh, this, I explained it, that for me, it seems that it, it seemed that uh, criminal organizations from these four countries had a better integration than the official one. For some people, they said, "No, it's not true. You are exaggerating." And they said, "Oh, I think that not." And when I started uh, 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 searching and finding the the proofs of it, I, I I could argue and I could say to to sources and to to other journalists, "Oh, no, it's 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 really true because of this, this, and this." And they both because wow, so yes, you are right. I have never thought about it. Or I didn't know this, and. Uh, it's it's totally true in Brazil. If you talk to a, a report that a reporter that talk that every day covers uh, crimes or drug trafficking, and uh, you ask quickly, what's the biggest uh, uh, marijuana producer or cocaine producer? Maybe he maybe no. Probably he he won't know. Maybe marijuana, because Paraguay is, is the, the biggest producer in the continent. There are uh, some years, but probably cocaine. Uh, he will say he would say uh, it's Colombia, and it's not Colombia. It's Peru, and uh, the second is Bolivia, the third is Colombia, and they don't know because they don't think in this transnational perspective. They don't stop to to think that uh, the problem of drugs in Brazil is like that because we have our our responsibilities but uh, Peru has uh, its responsibility Bolivia has it and Paraguay has it yeah. we 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 are block do you think that if, if there is a methodology or a guide I think that <laughs> in transnational uh, investigative journalism the methodology is very important because uh, if, of course, if you are a very ex experienced journalist and you have an incredible international career and you have sources in several countries, uh, you won't have the problem that I had. That is, I don't have sources, I don't know anyone in Paraguay, Peru and Bolivia, I don't know who uh, I can trust, so I had to follow a methodology. And the, the procedure that I, I follow was, first I have to, to have a very good uh, previous search, previous searching, and uh, then uh, I had to create a map of sources with the help of colleagues, with the help of other Brazilian sources that I had and which I trust. They could, they have international contacts that they, they put me in contact with. And uh, then I had uh, a very uh, deep interviews, uh, 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 a variety, uh, a group of very deep interviews with these new sources. And then I planned the travel, the trips, and then I traveled. So I think that this methodology was crucial. And I think that everybody that would have to deal with the challenge of 
do international investigative journalism without being a very uh, experienced journalist would have to, to face it. You have to, to, to cope with a, method, a methodology. And there's another uh, aspect. Uh, I had to, to tackle with information from four countries plus United States, so five countries. Uh, in, the, in the beginning of the, the, the searching, I thought that Colombia was also part of this block. And then I understood that not, because the drug produced in Colombia is exported to United States from Mexico, uh, throughout Mexico. So, uh, in the beginning, I had to cope with information, to deal with information from six countries. Uh, it was an incredible amount of, of information. I had to, to, to be very organized to, to deal with it. So I think that uh, I, it's, it's not an option for this kind of job. I had to, to follow uh, a methodology. That First, you, 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 you talked about the, a crucial characteristic of organized crime, that is the, the transnationalism. But we have another one that is the multiple crimes in which organizations are, are, are in. Uh, in here, in, in Latin America, we have this a lot. You have uh, uh, people that tackle with drug trafficking, but they also tackle with uh, people trafficking, they also tackle with uh, illegal minery and other kind of crimes and uh, this is uh, this is crucial to know this is crucial to understand how organized crime uh, uh, runs every day because we have the same money uh, you, you can imagine a rich man that want to 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 have a profit in investing in a legal activity, and uh, and he say, and he knows that in a legal activity he will have two percent of profit, and in an illegal one he will have thirty uh, percent. Of course, if he, he he doesn't have a good intention, he would choose for the second, would choose the second. Uh, but he has, for example, drug trafficking thirty percent, people trafficking fifty uh, percent. Terrorism, he has 60%, 70%. He will uh, direct his money uh, according to the profit. And uh, the journalist has to know that he is dealing with, he's covering uh, a, an organized crime that is transnational and is multiple. Uh, so I think that if we know this, we can understand better the the groups that we are covering. That's really interesting. Well, thank yes. you very much. Thank you.